morning or afternoon or evening how are you i hope you're good i really do but if you're not i hope these stories make you feel better Today, I'm going to be reading some r slash I do work here lady stories, read by Red. Here we go. I am the train driver. This happened about a week ago. I'm a train driver in training here in Germany. It was my last shift before my scheduled vacation. My instructor and I were on our 30 minute break. I sat in the cabin eating my lunch and he sat in the back eating his. Now we often park the train at stations for passengers to get in. This is one of those times. A knock on the side window got me out of the piece of eating. I opened the window and looked at this lady. Who are you? What are you doing in there? Why aren't you wearing a mask? I'm the driver. I'm having my lunch. Yeah, right. I know the driver and you aren't him. If you mean my instructor, he is here. Don't give me your bullcrap. You most likely stole the train. <laughs> what? Okay, Karen. Just then my instructor and the station security heard the commotion and came to the front. Karen! Long time no see. What's wrong? This piece of garbage keeps telling me lies about being the driver. Well, he is. He is my trainee. So be nice now and apologize or we might not be able to take you to your destination today. The lady scoffed again and turned around to leave. Security talked to her for a bit, then she left the station yelling and stomping her feet. You stole the train! Yeah, that seems really logical, Karen. Like, what have you been, you know? Have you been partaking in some mind-altering substances, Karen? Or are you just insane? We will never know. But it was sure a good story. And I think I would like to hear another good story. What about you? Yeah, here it is. I went to work at the court and ended up being put on trial. This story is about my brother. 10 or so years ago, he was trying to decide what sector he'd like to work in. After he quit a job in food service after one frustrating day, interested in law, he was able to get a customer service type job at the local Crown Court. One day, he's taking a break in an otherwise empty waiting room when he's accosted by a barrister. It may be worth bearing in mind that, in spite of my family being poor, we're all well spoken, thanks to my grandmother all but beating it into us. And my brother was sufficiently well dressed to be mistaken for an actual barrister. He wasn't dressed and doesn't speak like a member of the general public, even a member of the general public attending court. Where have you been? You're supposed to be in courtroom number three. Pardon, I think you're mistaken. No, I, I don't want to hear any excuses. You're supposed to be in courtroom number three now. My brother has what can be charitably labeled as anger management problems. In a professional setting, he's able to control them better, where they exhibit a sarcasm and malicious compliance, bordering on crap stirring. So he decides that he'll comply with this barrister's demand. Before too long, my brother is in the dock with the barrister. The jury are led back into the courtroom by a somewhat flushed looking usher and everybody stands as the judge re-enters the courtroom. And there is a pause. Barrister, where is your client? Uh, he is right there. He is right here, your honor. No, that's brother. He is my usher. I was wondering where he was. He should have been leading the jury back in. Judge, uh, 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 uh you're, 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 It would behoove you to learn what your client looks like. Brother, would you kindly go and fetch the actual defendant? <laughs> um, yeah, good job, barrister. I'm sure that your client feels super happy that you're defending them. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. I don't care who you are. I want you on that stand and I'm going to question you. Um, okay. <laughs> the best part is that the brother actually worked with that judge. Like, uh, it could have been a completely random judge and then it could have been very interesting testimony. 
All right, another story for you. Don't you want to speak to the actual doctor? I'm a psychiatrist with a private practice. A few years back, I had this horrible man working for me part-time who was supposed to be in charge of all my technology, as well as helping with other tasks. But that's another story. One day, a long-time patient comes in and she's having a full-on psychotic episode. She's talking to Jesus. She is actually Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary simultaneously. The works. Side note, she'd been stable for years and nothing had changed. Turned out she had pneumonia, but it took a while for anyone to figure out. So for anyone who might suffer from or love someone with chronic mental illness, always consider physical illness as a trigger for change in mental status. Anyway, I speak with her and she agrees to go to the hospital. I call 911 and explain the situation and the police and EMTs show up. The police arrive first and they know me so we're chatting. Meanwhile, other patients are showing up and I'm trying to see them and separate this poor psychotic lady and her bewildered husband from the other patients. So the front desk area is getting really crowded. Finally, the EMTs show up. The guy who worked for me was in his room down the hall and comes out to see what the commotion is all about. These EMTs walk in, look at all the people in the front desk area and make a beeline for the only guy. As they ignore me and rush past, I say casually, don't you want to speak to the doctor first? It took a second. The best part was when they finally got to the patient, she looks at the two AMTs. One is a young kid, the other a grown woman. The patient is babbling about her boyfriend Jesus taking her to church and also telling her husband that when he does the laundry, he has to separate the whites and darks. She says to the young one, how old are you? He says, 18. She says, are you sure you're old enough to take care of me? Turns out the kid was doing this vocational training as high school senior and the whole school heard about it the next day. And I'm still the doctor. <laughs> oh, that's, you know, that's that unconscional bias that most of us have where it's like, sex or gender or um, lifestyle or ethnicity, we have this mental picture in our heads of what, who the person should be. And it kind of sucks. If we want to promote equality, this kind of bias is really, really hard to break. So next time you find yourself judging unconsciously a situation be aware of that at least if we're aware we can try and do it i know i know i do it and i always like beat myself up after like no come on you know better than that but it's really hard to break these like these biases that we have um and some people are just racist jerks or sexist jerks so those that's a whole different story i'm not talking about that i'm talking about just this cultural bias whatever culture you come from there is some bias in there so yeah yeah okay that's my public service announcement for today <laughs> yeah i hope you enjoyed those r slash i do work here lady stories read by me read and yes i do work here in case you didn't guess <laughs> that was a bad Please give the video a like um, in sympathy for my terrible, terrible jokes. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already. You made it to the end. You might as well subscribe. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow.